If we've learned anything about SpaceX in 2024, it's that they can achieve just about anything they set their sights on. It's only been a week since the jaw-dropping Starship Flight 5 launch that made headlines worldwide. This launch was monumental, especially with the booster being caught mid-air during its return. A feat few thought possible. But true to their style, SpaceX is already moving on to something even bigger. They've just revealed an even more challenging plan for the next Starship flight, and we're going to break down all the details in today's video. So before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on Starship and SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. During Flight 5, as soon as the Super Heavy booster ignited, the 33 Raptor engines powered the vehicle for several minutes, pushing it toward the space. The booster separated from the upper stage, Ship 27 as planned, after approximately 2.5 minutes of powered flight. Once separation occurred, Booster 12 began its descent back to Earth, while Ship 27 continued its trajectory. Booster 12's descent was closely controlled to ensure it would be in an optimal position for a mid-air catch attempt by the Mechazilla chopstick arm stationed at the Starbase launch pad. During descent, Booster 12 conducted a series of carefully timed burns to slow down and orient itself. This included a boost back burn to adjust its trajectory, ensuring it would re-enter the atmosphere at the correct angle. Following re-entry, additional burns helped slow the booster and guide it toward the landing site. These complex maneuvers are designed to control the extreme speed and heat generated during re-entry, preventing any damage to the booster's heat-resistant components. The final phase involved the booster descending with the assistance of the grid fins to maintain stability. SpaceX's team closely monitored the descent and prepared the chopstick arms to attempt a mid-air catch. The chopstick successfully captured the booster, a monumental feat for SpaceX, which had aimed to improve the efficiency and reduce the cost of reusability through mid-air recovery instead of landing legs. This moment highlighted SpaceX's innovative engineering approach and validated the effectiveness of Mechazilla's catch mechanism, a critical part of their rapid reuse goals. Once the booster was caught, it was carefully lowered and secured on the launch mount, where it underwent initial inspections to confirm no damage occurred during the descent. After ensuring the booster was in good condition, SpaceX moved Booster 12 off the launch pad, clearing the way for the next phase of operations. While Booster 12's catch garnered the most attention, the upper stage, Ship 27, also played a vital role in Flight 5. After separation, Ship 27 continued on its journey, reaching a significant altitude before completing a controlled descent toward a targeted location in the Pacific Ocean. With Booster 12 safely removed and undergoing post-flight inspections, SpaceX immediately shifted focus to Booster 13, which was promptly transported to the launch site at Starbase. In a highly efficient operation, Booster 13 was positioned on the orbital launch mount just a week after Flight 5. Booster 13 then went through initial checks and tests. These initial tests include functionality checks on the chopstick arms, which play an essential role in stabilizing and catching the booster during launch and recovery. The chopsticks opened, closed, and adjusted their position around Booster 13, ensuring they were ready for the demands of Flight 6. Booster 13 and Ship 31 are expected to undergo a series of pre-launch procedures. Booster 13 itself includes several upgrades over previous versions, such as reinforced cowbell structures for liquid oxygen release control and additional strengthening around the stab points to handle increased loads and flight dynamics. Ship 31 has also seen upgrades particularly to its heat shield, which SpaceX has carefully adjusted to improve durability during re-entry. This prototype's heat shield was retiled, a process that took nearly 40 days, making it more resilient against the extreme temperatures encountered during atmospheric re entry. One interesting decision made during these tests was the retrieval of the hot staging ring from Booster 12 after Flight 5. Initially, some assumed this ring would serve as a display or as a visual symbol of the mission's success. However, the hot staging ring may actually be slated for refurbishment and reuse in future missions, specifically for Booster 13. 
The hot staging ring is part of the separation mechanism that helps Starship stage transitions in flight, particularly when shifting from the first, super-heavy booster stage, to the second stage. This ring allows propellant gases from the upper stage to ignite and thrust forward, while the lower stage's engines are still generating power, effectively reducing any loss of momentum during stage separation. Beyond booster recovery, SpaceX is now focused on the even larger challenge of orbital refueling, a critical milestone for long-term lunar and Mars missions. This process involves transferring cryogenic propellants between Starship vehicles in orbit, a feat that SpaceX plans to achieve by late 2025. According to their current approach, one Starship will act as a tanker, delivering fuel to a mission-ready Starship known as the Target in low Earth orbit. The process begins with the launch of a depot Starship into low Earth orbit, essentially a fuel station in space. This depot will then be gradually filled with propellant by a sequence of up to 14 additional tanker Starship launches over several weeks. This refueling operation will take place at altitudes between 300 to 400 kilometers above Earth's surface, a strategic choice to minimize fuel loss due to propellant boil-off and to simplify the docking process in a stable orbit. Once filled, the main Starship will dock with the depot to transfer the required fuel for its journey. Docking two large vehicles in orbit is complex, but SpaceX's experience with the Dragon spacecraft docking at the International Space Station provides a foundational advantage. For propellant transfer, SpaceX plans to use a process called settled propellant transfer. This involves applying a gentle acceleration with control thrusters, creating a very slight artificial gravity to push the propellant from one tank to the other. This technique minimizes sloshing and allows efficient fuel transfer in microgravity. While orbital refueling is essential for SpaceX's long-term vision, achieving it presents enormous technical and regulatory hurdles. One immediate challenge lies in the logistics of launching two starships close together, as SpaceX's current launch approval processes with the FAA have proven time-consuming. Currently, SpaceX struggles with regulatory papers, sometimes waiting months between Starship launches due to FAA safety reviews and environmental impact assessments. This means that launching two Starships sequentially within a short time frame for refueling, even if technically ready, might face delays unless regulatory approvals become more efficient. On the technical side, maintaining cryogenic propellant temperatures in orbit is particularly challenging. Starship relies on supercooled liquid oxygen at around 90 Kelvin and liquid methane at 112 Kelvin. In the vacuum of space, heat dissipation is minimal, meaning that without effective thermal management, the propellant could warm up and boil off, reducing fuel availability. SpaceX is exploring several methods to counteract this, such as specialized surface coatings to reflect solar heat and passive cooling techniques that orient the spacecraft to minimize heat absorption. In another groundbreaking achievement, SpaceX launched its 100th mission of the year recently, with a Falcon 9 carrying 23 Starlink satellites from Cape Canaveral. This mission also set a new record for SpaceX, surpassing their previous yearly high of 96 launches in 2023. Remarkably, SpaceX didn't stop there. They followed up with a second Starlink launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base, deploying another 20 satellites hours later. Don't forget to check the link in the description to grab your own highly realistic Starship model. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.